Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. I'm having to refilm this because I did like the first several minutes and introduced the book and everything and then my phone went dark and I was like what? That That's not supposed to happen and I hadn't recorded so here I am again although it's the first time for you but it's time for another reading vlog. So I meant to start filming this yesterday but I ended up not being able to read it all because it's it's been a really busy weekend. We spent like eight hours at a friend's house yesterday playing D&D, Settlers of Catan, and then when we got home it was time for Eurovision! So that's always entertaining to watch but it lasts way too long. The voting takes two hours and then you see the results and it's like what the hell this is bullshit. But France came in second France has the highest score it's gotten in over 30 years, so France did really well. Italy ended up winning. I'm eh about it, not really a fan. But this is the first year that I've actually really liked France's songs since I've moved here, so that was really nice. I feel really bad for Germany though, because I thought they were amazing and they only ended up getting three points in the end, so I thought that was sad. But anyway, today I ended up having a late start and I was rushing to get stuff done before I had to go to the Luxembourg Gardens to have a book club meeting and it's been over a year since we've had an in-person meeting because of COVID and we just started lifting some restrictions here last Wednesday so this is the first opportunity we've really had to meet up in a park again and it was just so nice and I met some new people and it was just such a good time being able to talk like face to face in person with people again about books and that was just a good time so it is evening here it is a sunday i don't know what the date is but i've been wanting to read this book for a while but my library didn't have it for the longest time but they've recently gotten a shipment of like hundreds and hundreds of books and the past two times I've been to the library, they've literally just had like these boxes of books all stacked up just waiting to be processed to be put on the shelves. And that is Home Before Dark by Riley Sager. I hope I'm pronouncing his last name right there. I think this was published in 2020. I'm gonna have to look real quick. Oh, and I have my bookmark in here and it's one of my favorite ones because it's Alphonse Mucha art. And I actually got this at a random Torah shop here, I think in the 5th arrondissement, and it's so shiny. I love it. Anyway, um, I think this came out in 2020. Yeah! Alright, so this isn't that old. All I know is that it's supposed to be like horror, maybe some thriller thrown in there, and I haven't looked at this at all since I've picked it up at the library, so just offhand, I think it has to do with, I, I don't know if it's just a singular person or if it's like a couple or something, but I think it has to do with kind of people who think their home is being invaded, like there's someone else in the house or something like that. Um, so let's read the description together, because that's all I know. All right. It says, Bells that ring themselves, record players that turn on and play music to empty rooms, ghosts that climb out of wardrobes. Okay, that sounds fucking terrifying. I don't like that one. All right. Maggie Holt doesn't believe in these things, even though they are the details of the story that made her family famous. 25 years ago, she and her parents, Ewan? And Jess moved into Bain. Oh gosh, I really can't read, so I apologize. Bainberry Hall, a rambling Victorian estate in the Vermont woods. They spent 20 days there before fleeing in the dead of night, an ordeal Ewan later recounted in a horror memoir, House of Horrors. His tale of ghostly happenings and encounters with malevolent spirits became a worldwide phenomenon, rivaling the Amityville horror in popularity and skepticism. That's funny that it mentions like a real uh, like paranormal. It's interesting that it mentions another real like paranormal story. Maggie has lived her life in the shadow of her father's book. 
And I also think it's funny they bring that up because I was just thinking like, oh, this really sounds like an Ed and Lorraine Warren story. Maggie has lived her life in the shadow of her father's book, so when she inherits Bainbury Hall after his death, she returns to renovate the house to prepare it for sale. However, her homecoming is anything but warm. People from the past chronicled the House of Horrors lurk in the shadows, and locals, are, locals aren't thrilled that their small town has been made infamous thanks to Maggie's father. Even more unnerving is Bainbury Hall itself a place filled with relics from another era that hint at a history of dark deeds. As Maggie experiences strange occurrences straight out of Ewan's book, she starts to wonder if what he wrote was more fact than fiction. Alternating between Maggie's uneasy homecoming and chapters from her father's book, Home Before Dark is the story of a house with long buried secrets and a woman's quest to uncover them, even if the truth is far more terrifying than any haunting. So that's interesting. It's a book within a book. That's cool. I like that aspect because at first... Right when I saw the word alternating, I was like, oh my god, this is going to be more dual timeline garbage. But a book within a book sounds interesting. I'm into that. So that sounds fine. And this is actually a lot different than what I was expecting. I thought it was going to be like some normal couple and I think there's like some home invader or something. But this is more <coughs> leaning toward like the stereotypical someone inherits a house and goes there and shit starts happening kind of thing. So that's obviously something that if you read horror, you encounter a lot. So it'll be interesting to see how they kind of do that trope differently in here. So I'm interested to get started in that. So I'll be starting this this evening and let's get into it. It is Monday evening here now, May 24th, and... My brain just went completely blank. Today is a holiday in France. Pentecost in English, I believe, and Pentecost en français. So my husband isn't working today, but it's really crappy outside and has been raining, hailing, thundering, lightning, all of the things. So it's not like we were actually able to even take a walk outside. So I'm about to start reading again for the evening because I'm not feeling the greatest. And last night I was able to get through about 50 pages and this whole setup and feel of the book really reminds me of a few movies I've seen. I don't want to name them because then you wouldn't kind of know the plot twists in them, but I'm really wondering if the twist is gonna be like, oh, it was someone living in the walls kind of thing. Cause I've encountered that quite a lot, especially in movies. And it really jumps out to me when a child like has an imaginary friend kind of deal, like when they're supposed to be like this main entity, that's when it really especially jumps out to me. And our main character in this, Maggie, apparently when she was a kid in this manner, apparently she would talk about a Mr. Shadow. And so I'm kind of wondering if that's the direction this is going to take. But I really hope not, because I think it would have to be done extremely well for me to enjoy that, as I've seen it done several times already, and it was always unexpected. And so now that I kind of see some of the signs, it would just kind of suck if that's the direction it went in the end. So we'll see with that. But the formatting of this, I like how it is for a dual timeline, which is essentially what it is, even though the second timeline is the point of view of like her dad in this book he's written. The dad's book is actually the first chapter, but they don't count those chapters at all like it's not titled chapter one chapter one is actually from the point of view from maggie so i've technically only read two chapters even though i'm about to start the fifth one but the father's book chapters the font i think it's the same font but it's bold so it makes it even more obvious that it's different than the modern point of view but so far it's been like one chapter of the dad's book then one chapter of Maggie, then back to the book, and then back to Maggie. So I hope it continues that pattern throughout the rest of the book. I like that because one of the previous books I read, The Paris Library, it had dual timeline, but it would go like 
hundred plus pages without going back to the second timeline. And so I would just kind of forget all about it. And I actually am finding the father's book to be extremely interesting. So it's kind of feels like I'm reading two books at once in a way. And I guess technically I kind of am. So I'm actually really enjoying this aspect of it so far. But essentially our main character seems to be in her early 30s now and her father has just passed away. So we're kind of starting right where she inherits this manor that she didn't even realize her dad still owned. So all of it is just like a complete shock for her. But all her life, his the book he wrote has kind of haunted her in the way that she doesn't believe in the paranormal or ghosts at all. She's a very, very logical person. And so growing up with people kind of ostracizing her for this book has really taken its toll. And it doesn't help that both of her parents have been very closed off over the experiences they had there. And they've never answered her questions about it. The only answers she has about this place are what's written in this book. And so we're essentially learning along with her anything that comes up because her parents have just been so closed off about it. And now with her father's death, he refused to give her any answers in his final moments, just telling her to never go there. And then she meets with her mom and she eventually gets from her mom that the book was a lie, the dad just wanted to write this haunted house story and he used the manor to do that. But the mom also in more of like a sneaky way, which Maggie realizes doesn't want her to go to the manor and wants her to stay away from it. So she's just kind of like, what the hell is up with this? They're still keeping secrets from me. And so she still doesn't really know much besides of what her mother said, but she can tell her mom's lying. So it's 100% a situation where we really don't know what the truth is and what is a lie. So I am to the part where I think she's going to go to the manor now and try and check things out. But I'm curious to see how quick we get into like the paranormal things and aspects here. Apparently Maggie really doesn't remember anything of her time in the house. She just remembers being afraid, but apparently she has night terrors. So it's kind of like, really? Because now if stuff happens at night, we can just attribute it to that. So I don't know, but I'm interested to see where it goes from here. And I'm enjoying it so far. Look at this cattle boy. He's so long. Oh my goodness. Look at you. Look at you. Oh my goodness, look at that face. Look at this face in them vampire teethies. Teeth. <laughs> you got goobers. All right, so about an hour has passed and I'm now on page 105. And I think my theory is what's actually gonna end up happening. This main story really seems like it's gonna be like a person living in the walls kind of thing. Or if not in the walls, like just around, like in the house somewhere. But just everything that is happening re is really, really pointing to that. Like something that was there instead of like being moved somewhere else, it's just completely missing. She sees someone like standing outside in the tree line, just like staring at the house kind of thing. And it's stuff like that that really just makes it seem like it's gonna end up being a person. But the father's book parts, it is 100% like traditional ghost story type stuff. And I really like that it's two different stories because the, the dad's book just seems like it is a ghost. It's very traditional, but what's happening so far in the other story seems very, very human. And I like that contrast. And I also like how I'm kind of getting two stories for one right now. But I really find it interesting how the experiences are different than what the father wrote in the book. And it might be how like the book isn't really true kind of thing. Or maybe what's happening now is just something completely different than back then. Who really knows? But 
Yeah, it definitely seems like it's going to be a real person so far. Look at you. What you doing? Hmm? What you doing? Ooh, ooh, ooh. What you doing? Oh. Oh my goodness. Look at that chin. Look at that chin. No, 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 no. No, no, no. You're so cute. Mm? You're so cute. Oh, stretchy tart. Stinky on. Mm -hmm. Hello, it is now the next morning. Uh, it's Tuesday? Yeah, it's Tuesday, and don't mind the mess behind me. I was just filming for some other videos. So yeah, I got pretty far in the book last night. I think I'm on a page 160 something, which I don't know why I didn't grab the book to actually have it by me to check. Um, oh, I'm actually farther than I thought. I'm on page 192, but I'm pretty much exactly halfway. Look at that. Yeah. So I'm actually pretty proud of how much I read yesterday. That's a bit impressive for me. So I'm still pretty much 100% on board that someone's like living in the walls or living on the property at least. There's actually a line from the dad's book where the mom makes some comment of like, well, we don't know what's living in these walls. And I was just like, ha, 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 that is way too like specific of a line. So I thought that was kind of funny. I took a picture of it, but I'm using my phone to record. So I don't know the exact wording, but it was something along those lines. There was something that happened but I can't even remember what it was. And it made me think that there was some other possibility, but like, I honestly don't even remember. <laughs> so apparently I was really tired at the end of reading this. Oh, that's right. There was a big event that happened in the book, but I really can't say because it would be spoilers for the beginning quarter of the book about. And it's interesting. It adds a twist to this kind of story. It's making it not as straightforward as it could have been, but this book has really pulled me in. I didn't want to stop reading last night, but it was like 11, my husband was coming into bed. And so it was just kind of like, yeah, I should probably stop so we can turn the lights off. What the fuck is that noise? I have some weird noise happening in here. What the fuck? I don't know. What? Oh, maybe it's the chair? Oh, there it is. I've gotten the other filming done today that I needed to do, so I am so happy for that. Oh my god. But I still have a pretty busy day planned, so not sure when I'll be able to read more, but man, if I had my way, I'd probably finish this today, but hopefully I can finish it in the next two days at least, because I really like this. And I really thought it was going to be a very stereotypical story at first, so I'm actually kind of surprised at how much I'm enjoying it so far, but I'm happy for that, because obviously I want to read something that's intriguing to me and interesting, so... Hopefully we stay on that trajectory.
now the next day I had an orthodontist appointment this morning and it's actually the shortest one yet it was still painful she replaced the bands on the side of my teeth I don't really know what those are and I got a thicker wire in the bottom and that was it so luckily no new hardware was added to my mouth so doing okay so far the bands were being a bitch on this one tooth though so that tooth hurts but Hopefully it stays that way, but we'll see. So last night I got to a point where I wanted to talk about another theory I had, but it was almost 11 at night and after 10, I don't really like to film anymore because I have to talk pretty loud and I don't want to bother the neighbors with that. So I just held off and I didn't think I was going to finish it, but I finished it. <laughs> I mean, I guess that's a good sign. I didn't want to stop reading. So, it is a 4 out of 5 in the end, but the ending, my nemesis, ah! <laughs> so the ending is definitely the worst part of this, not surprising for me I guess. I love that it really felt like I was getting two different genres of stories here. The father's book definitely felt like a traditional ghost story and I actually liked reading that better than the better than the main story, Maggie's point of view, for a good chunk of the book. But then it did end up going into like really silly territory, but still it was traditional ghost story. And then on the other hand, we have more of like a home invasion story. And so I really liked that aspect where we get these two different perspectives. We don't know what's true and what's a lie. We don't know all the specifics of what's going on until the very end, of course. And so it really is like you're reading two stories in one. And I loved that the alternating chapters kept through the entirety of the book and they complemented each other extremely well. Like if something was mentioned in one chapter, then that's what would be touched upon in the next. So it wasn't like going to two completely different subjects. It was very complementary and I thought that was fabulous and really worked well in this book. So if you are familiar with this genre, then you will definitely be able to predict what happens in the end. You'll be able to figure some other things out as well. And I think it's just really, it really has to do with familiarity. Like this doesn't do anything extremely new. So if you recognize those signs, you're gonna know what happens in the end. The last few chapters of this did end up getting ridiculous in my opinion. It did the thing where it's, there's a fake out and you're like, what the fuck? This doesn't make sense. And then another fake out and it's like, what is this book doing? And then another fake out and it's just like, come on, like, don't insult my intelligence here. Like, this is a little ridiculous. So I still settled on four for this because I just enjoyed it. The journey of reading this was fantastic. I loved it. I never felt bored and I binged most of it in two days. So, I mean, come on, like, it's a great book. I just have issues with endings and I don't think that's ever gonna go away. So if you're a fan of horror, especially gothic and ghosts, things that go bump in the night kind of thing, then this will definitely be right up your alley. Like I said, it might be predictable for you, but for me, even with that, I loved it. So it really depends on your personal opinion there. This was the first book by Riley Sager I think I've read, so I'm definitely interested in checking out his others. I've kind of heard they're all a bit similar, but I don't really know how that could be. So I will try to be checking some of those out soon. But thank you for hanging out with me. I feel like this was a bit of a shorter, smaller vlog, but that's okay, that happens. It is always appreciated to have you here. And until next time, bonne journée and au revoir.